Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are going to rank all of the dossier perfumes that I have in my collection. We are going to talk about the scent itself and then the comparison to the luxury perfume that it is inspired by. The ranking is kind of just based on the scent, but if I had ones close to each other that I liked the scent pretty much the same, then I did move them around based on the performance of the Dossier perfume. So I have 12 perfumes in front of me, so we are going to start at 12 and then end with my favorite, which actually is kind of grouped together because I have a few that are my favorites that are not going to be surprising if you have seen any of my other Dossier or any perfume videos in general. So we're going to rank all 12 of my Dossier perfumes. If you are new here, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos and let's get started. Okay, so to start off, if you have not heard of Dossier or have not seen any of my perfume videos about Dossier, Dossier is a perfume company that makes perfumes that are inspired by high-end or luxury perfumes, but the prices are at a fraction of the luxury and high-end price. So the perfumes are all $29 or $39 depending on the perfume that you purchase. And I do have a coupon for 10% off if you are interested. I will include the link down below. They are also running a Black Friday sale. So if you spend a certain amount of money, you get a higher percentage off. So definitely check out that sale. Again, if you have not seen my videos, I really, really like Dossier perfumes. They are a great way to try out a high-end perfume scent that you really like, but you do not, do not want to spend that money. A lot of these high-end perfumes that they're inspired by are a lot of money. So if you do not want to spend that much, then Dossier is a great alternative to that. They do have a few new perfumes on their site that I am really interested in. They did just come out with a Killian Love Don't Be Shy version, which I really, really want to try. So I'm really close to getting that. And then they made a Giorgio Armani My Way, which I really, really like. So I'm interested in testing that one out as well. I think there was another new one, but I cannot remember what it is. But, oh, the Valentino Volte... Vol Voce, Voce, Viva, I think that's what it's called. I like that perfume as well, or I only smelled it once in Ulta maybe, but I would be interested in testing out those three. So I might place an order during the Black Friday sale, but we will see. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about these 12 perfumes. So starting at the bottom, these are actually both of the Joe Malone inspired fragrances. So the first one is Fruity Honey. This was this one. I have all of the cards here too because I don't remember what all of them are inspired by. So these are a great thing to keep on hand. So this one is inspired by Joe Malone's Nectarine Blossom and Honey. So this one, I guess I don't like the honey, honey and nectarine mix. This is a good scent for summer because it does have that nectarine. The, quickly just go through the notes. The notes of this are black currant, green leaves at the top, honey and nectarine at the middle, and then the base notes are peach and vetiver. So I actually do get the peach too. So it's peach and nectarine mixed with the honey. I don't really get the black currant at all because that normally is a deeper scent, but you do get the green notes as well. But this is just at the bottom because it is not really a scent that I enjoy. I think the lasting power was fine on this, especially for a $29 perfume. It did last on me, I just did not like the scent. And then the other one is Floral Pear, and this one is inspired by Jo Malone's English Pear and Freesia. So this one is too floral for me. The notes of this are pear, bergamot, watermelon, and rhubarb at the top. Kimse, Rose, Freesia, and Orange Blossom at the middle, and then Woody Notes, Musk, and Amber at the base. So I get more of the Rose, which I don't like Rose. I get some of the Musk, actually, now that I'm smelling that. I don't really get the Amber. I don't really get the Watermelon or the Rhubarb. That's pretty much it. It is just too floral for me, and it's, again, not a fragrance, not a scent that I'm interested in. I just wanted to test them out because I have not tried Jo Malone colognes before. 
Again, the lasting power is fine, but I just did not like the scent. So that was 12 and 11. At number 10, we have Floral Honeysuckle. This one is inspired by Gucci Bloom and not a surprise. This is just way too floral for me. I don't know why I picked this one because it is pretty much all florals, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> the notes of this are green leaves, orange, honeysuckle at the top, jasmine, sandback, and tuberose at the middle, and then orris, sandalwood, and vanilla. So I actually don't really get a lot of these because I do mostly get the floral and you do get the green notes. I don't really smell the vanilla. I think the floral notes are a little bit overpowering. So this one gives me a slight headache because it is more floral. So if you do not like floral scents, then you're probably not going to like this, just like you wouldn't like Gucci Bloom because it is too floral. So definitely keep that in mind. But that is definitely the strongest note in this, in my opinion. So that was number 10. Number nine, we have Ambery Saffron, which is inspired by Baccarat Rouge 540. This is another one. The scent is just not my favorite. I have not tried Baccarat Rouge. I had not even smelled it before, but I wanted to see what everybody loved. So that is why I wanted to try this one out. But it's just not, not my thing. The notes of this are saffron and orange blossom at the top, jasmine, plum, cedarwood at the middle, and then oak moss, fir balsam, and amber at the base. So this is very strong on the plum and the amber with some of the cedarwood and oak moss. I guess I don't really like plum scents, even though I do have Marc Jacobs Decadence, which is a strong plum, but it is mixed in with other notes that give it a different vibe. This one with the amber, it just smells a little odd in my opinion. So I don't know how Baccarat Rouge 540 is so popular because it smells so different than other really popular scents, like the other sweet floral scents that are super, super popular. This does not smell anything like that. So I'm kind of surprised that this is as popular as it is universally. It seems like so many people love this scent or love Baccarat Rouge 540 but I would not be one of those. So this comes in at number nine. Number eight, this one is purely just a scent preference. So this one is Oriental Oak Moss and this is inspired by Chanel's Coco Mademoiselle. So the notes of this are bergamot, orange, peach at the top. The middle notes are jasmine, rose, and patchouli. And then at the base is Oak Moss, vanilla, and Betty Burr. So again, just a scent preference. This smells very similar to Coco Mademoiselle. This is my most recent fragrance, actually. Coco Mademoiselle is definitely sweeter. Like this one, you get definitely get more of the patchouli and the bergamot than in Coco Mademoiselle, but they are still very, very close. So you do get that peach and the orange in there. You get that fruitiness, but this one is just a little bit stronger on those notes. This one does last very long, but it is 100% not as strong as this. This one is one of the strongest perfumes I have in my collection. I just have to spray it once and then I'm good. That is why I've barely used any of this because I feel like I have only sprayed it like 20 times, but I spray it like I spray it once. I've only worn it like 20 times, but I spray it once and then I'm good to go. So this one is definitely not as strong per se, but it still lasts on my skin. I can still smell it throughout the day, but it is just a scent preference for me. So this is number eight. Number seven, we have Floral Rhubarb, and this is inspired by Marc Jacobs Perfect, which is a fairly recent perfume by Marc Jacobs. This one I do really, really like, but there's just something about it that is not my style. Maybe a different floral note that is not my favorite. But the notes of this are rhubarb, orange blossom, peach. A lot of these perfumes have peach in them. The middle notes are daffodil, milky accord, narcissus, and then the base notes are cedarwood, blonde woods, and musks. So again, it might just be the daffodil, like the mix of that different floral note that I'm not used to, possibly. I do like it on the skin. It does last a while. I did like Marc Jacobs Perfect in store, so maybe this one is just a little bit more floral than that one, but I have not smelled that one in a while, so I can't really compare 
that well <laughs> but I think this one is just a little bit more floral but I still like this more than the other ones but it's just that addition of that floral note that puts it in at number seven yeah number seven <laughs> Number six is Oriental Cherry, and this is inspired by Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. This is a great example of the price difference for Dossier perfumes. This being $29 or $39, I don't know exactly what this one is. Actually, I don't know why I didn't say this before, but this one and Ambry Saffron are great examples because the 1.7 fluid ounce bottles of these are over $300. So if you like those scents, Definitely get the dossier version because you'd probably rather spend $29 than $350 on a perfume. I mean, I would rather do that. I don't know about you, but I personally would rather only spend $29 if I can get the same scent. The lasting power might not be as close to the original that it's inspired by, but it fits close enough, then this is definitely worth it. The notes of this are cherry, almond, cinnamon at the top, cloves, rose, jasmine, plum at the middle, and then Peru balsam, tonka bean, and vanilla. So it has some interesting notes. As soon as I take the cap off, you get that cherry almond right off the bat. This just smells really good. I want to put this on. I just love the smell of cherries. Ugh. On the skin, it just smells so good. That's why this one is coming in at number six because the top five are ones that I really, really like, but this one is pretty dang close. The scent is just, uh, it's just so juicy and so, so good. I really like this one a lot. So if you like the Tom Ford Lost Cherry, this is a perfect alternative because of the price difference. Plus, you can get an additional 10% off with my discount, so keep that in mind. The Elastin Power is really good on this one. I can definitely still smell it at the end of the day, and it's amazing because I can still smell like cherry yummy goodness by the end of the day. And I've heard that Lost Cherry does not have great lasting power, but again, I have not tried it because it is way too expensive. I wasn't going to buy it, but I have not gotten a sample of it or anything like that, but I've heard that the lasting power is not good. I know Kathleen Lights talked about this in a favorites video or fails video, possibly maybe that was a fail. I think she really liked the scent, but the lasting power was crap on it and it's a $350 perfume, so that's not great. But this, I think the lasting power is good. It's not super, super strong. Like I wouldn't say you can spray yourself once and it'll just last you all day. I think I sprayed myself a couple times, but I didn't need to reapply or anything. I can still get hints of it. And keep in mind that sometimes you can't really smell yourself by the end of the day, but other people can because you are so used to the scent by the end of the day. But I haven't really gone around asking people if they can smell me. So I don't really know, but I think I can still smell it by the end of the day. So I think that is a good sign. So this is number six. Number five, we have Floral Pink Pepper. And this is inspired by Dior Miss Dior Cherie. This is the 2017 version, the Eau de Parfum. This is another recent one for me, and I really like this. You would think this is more floral because it's Dior, but there's just something different about it that I really like. The notes of this are bergamot, lychee, orange at the top, rose, jasmine, pink pepper at the middle, and then patchouli, blonde woods, and vanilla at the base. So there is going to be a little bit of a pattern with the top five perfumes. Let me know in the comments down below if you catch the pattern of the top five perfumes that I like. So this one, you definitely get the vanilla and the patchouli. You get a mix of the jasmine and the orange. Ugh, it, it's really, really good. You don't really smell the rose, which again is good because I don't like the smell of rose. But this is a good mix between the floral and the sweetness. This does last a while too. I mean, all of these perfumes really did last all day. They might not have been as strong at the end of the day, but you can still get hints of them, which is pretty good for a perfume. So this one is number five. Number four, we have Floriental Brown Sugar, 
which this one was actually a surprise for me because of what it's inspired by. This is inspired by YSL's Mon Perry, the Eau de Parfum version, and I feel like I've smelled that before and I didn't really like it, so that's why I wanted to try it out again to see if I would like it, and I actually do really like it, obviously, because it is number four. <laughs> the notes of this are bergamot, raspberry, pear, pear at the top, jasmine, orange blossom, brown sugar at the middle, and then patchouli, amber, and vanilla at the base. So again, so different. You definitely get the raspberry and the pear. I really like the mix. I think the pear is a little bit stronger, but you get that brown sugar sweetness in there. But the patchouli and the amber and the vanilla just bring in that deepness and richness to it. This one definitely smells better on my skin when it's on there for at least a few hours. Sometimes perfumes are like that. But again, this was a surprise for me because I feel like I did not like Mon Paris when I tried it. Maybe I smelled the wrong version. I don't know, but I did actually really like this one. So that's why it is number four. Number three, and these top, these top three are not going to be surprising at all because I feel like I've talked about these a million times and these perfumes that they're inspired by. So number three is Gourmand White Flowers. This is inspired by Victor and Rolf's Flower Bomb, which is one of my favorite perfumes in my whole collection. The notes of this are bergamot, green tea, freesia, berries at the top, white flowers, orchid, and rose at the middle, and then musk, patchouli, caramel, and vanilla at the base. I mean, it smells like flower bomb. It is not exact. I have it right here. It is not exact exact, but it is pretty close. You can definitely, you would definitely know that it was inspired by flower bomb when you wear this. Yeah, but this one is a little bit sweeter. But I just, I love Flower Bomb, so I knew I was going to like this. You get the berries, you get the patchouli, you get the lasting power of Flower Bomb, and that vanilla. It's, it's so, so good. My nose is so itchy today, and I don't know why. Maybe I'm coming into money. Is that what that means? When your nose itches? I don't remember. Something good, I hope. But this one, the lasting power is great. Flower Bomb Lasting Power is amazing. Like I could only spray that one once or twice and it'll last me all day. It will still smell as strong. This one is probably not as long lasting, but it is pretty dang close. So that comes in at number three. Number two is Gourmand Orange Blossom. And this one is inspired by Lancome's Le Vie et Belle, which again is one of my favorite perfumes. So good. <laughs> The notes of this are orange blossom, black currant, hazelnut at the top, orris, jasmine, sandback, patchouli at the middle, and then praline, vanilla, tonka bean at the base. So this one, the praline and the tonka bean come out a lot, and the black currant, it smells so good. This is so much sweeter than Flower Bomb. Flower Bomb has that mix of the white flowers, but this one, the praline is super, super strong and it's so good. This is another one, the last power is fantastic. I can definitely still smell myself at the end of the day and I just love it. I, sm I think it smells so dang good. So of course I like that come like 8 p.m. and I'm still smelling like that, I still smell like praline goodness. I love it. So that is why that is at number two. So if you have watched my other videos and you know what perfumes I have, Take a guess down below at my number one perfume. So I will let you guys guess. And now we will get to the number one, my favorite dossier perfume in my collection. So this one is Floriental Vanilla, and that is inspired by this guy right here, YSL Black Opium. So these three, which I've talked about, these three are my favorites in my collection of Black Opium, Liviate Bell, and Flower Bomb. So it's not surprising that these three Dossier perfumes are at the top of my list because it is pretty much based on the scent preferences. And since those are my favorite perfumes in my collection, of course the Dossier versions are also gonna be my favorites, but and the perfumes are amazing in the Dossier line. So the notes of this are Mandarin, Pear, Pink Pepper, and Licorice at the top. 
these are a little bit dusty. Whoops. Jasmine, orange blossom at the middle, and then cedarwood, patchouli, vanilla, and coffee at the base. So this one, YSL Black Opium is known for its coffee note, or that's why it is super, super popular and more unique, I think, in my opinion. Even though now everyone says that it is not very unique, but it's because everybody wears it. So it is a very common fragrance now, but not many perfumes have a coffee note in it. So that's why I think it's unique. It's not a strong note. You can definitely smell it, but I don't think it's very strong at all. You get the vanilla, definitely. So I like that as well. I don't know how to even explain it. I just love the scent so much. Like I could wear this every day and be totally content. This one is very strong. Not strong. The lasting power is great. Like I can still smell this the next day. Also because I love the fragrance so much. So I know what it smells like. So the next day if I smell like this, like I know it's the perfume obviously. But that shows a great lasting power if you can still smell it like that the next morning. So that is a good testament to the lasting power of the perfume. And again, for the price, like that's ridiculous. So this is my number one favorite Dossier perfume in my collection. So that was all 12. Again, the first like eight maybe are ones that I would still wear. I still like the scent, but the last like four are probably ones that I'm not really going to wear as much just because I'm not really a fan of those scents. I might give them away to people in my life that like those scents more than I would just to get more use out of them because what are they going to do in my collection if I'm not going to wear them? They're just going to sit on my shelf. So maybe those will be going to some friends and family that like those scents more than I do. But the top eight, don't touch them. Do not try to take those away from me because there will be problems. Let me know if you guys have tried Dossier before. I would love to hear your thoughts. Again, if you are interested, I will have my link down below with the discount. This is not sponsored or anything. They have just given me the discount for you guys to save more money. And again, they're having a Black Friday sale so you can save even more money. So definitely keep that in mind. If you want gifts for other people or gifts for yourself for the holidays, this is a great affordable option. So definitely check them out, 100% recommend. But that completes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.